camp's been fantastic. It's been long, really long. Um, eight weeks this training camp's been. Um, we've had lots to work on. Um, not anything essential that we had to work on, but just in the continued progression of Kelvin. And, um, you know, he's gone absolutely perfect. Not just Kelvin, though, no, Todd Roberts and Andy Harris as well. You know, we've got three guys on this weekend, so, and they're all in tip top shape. This week's been the final week. Tonight, we've just finished the final session. All been about sharpening, and the lads are ready, really ready. Yeah, I've done reception on all of them. <laughs> Even the change of opponent when we got the new opponent last night for, uh, for Andy. But uh, yeah, I mean, to me, that's one of the most important things. You've got to know your opponent inside out. Um, you know, it's, it's not like the amateur days where you don't really know who you're up against half the time. If you can get any information, that's great. But in this game now, there's information available. You've got to use it. You know, it's, it's to our advantage to be able to use it to know what our opponent's habits are and how they fight, you know. And you have to have, hopefully, you get an array of videos of, of your opponent as well so you can see how they can adapt in each fight because obviously they're not going to fight the same fight every fight. Even if, even if our fights did go on, it doesn't really matter because we change every time anyway. Yeah, we change our tactics to suit our next opponent. You know, we're not one dimensional, we're changing all the time. We had a game plan for Kelvin's last opponent, um, it should have been Matthew Barney. When Barney pulled out four days before the fight, we then got Ruslan's in and we saw Ruslan's was a completely different fighter to Barney. Barney was, um, his lead hand was by his waist and he was on the back foot all the time, he was you know, just trying to mess you around the sport of the fight. Whereas Ruslan's comes to try and knock you out, you know, and he, very he's got very aggressive. He's quite short, but he's very powerful. So immediately we have to change things around with three days to go. We did it, and as everybody saw when Calvin fought him, it was a very measured, controlled boxing. Wasn't getting hit, but he's getting his own shots off. You know, that was a, a last-minute change. Yeah, it, it was a perfect, perfect display of his boxing ability against an aggressive, come-forward fighter that's just trying to knock your head off. He comes to fight. He comes to fight. He comes to fight. Yeah. So it's going to be entertaining to watch. I'd say it'd be entertaining to watch. Yeah, I mean, Sam, Sam's got a good record. Um, I think it was last year he won the International Masters um, uh, light heavyweight title. So, you know, he, he, he's been there. He's mixed it with some good class opponents as well. You know, he's not a bum. He, he, will, he will be fit. He will be coming to fight. Um, but we've got a game plan. Um, We've been very fortunate in the fact that we've been going up to Sheffield once a week for the last five or six weeks and the sparring that we've had up there with Carl Froch has been absolutely fantastic. From my personal experience, from watching Calvin from training on the last fight to this fight, his speed and his power seems to have come on no end. Almost a different fighter again. Lots of people said that um, between his, his fight last year with Tony Hill to this fight with Ruslands, he changed hugely. And they're going to see another massive change between Ruslands and Sam Cousins this weekend. You know, middleweight's not good for Kel. Super middleweight, as as we've been proven now for the rounds that we've done with Frotch. I mean, we've done 42 rounds. You know, and Kelvin's been there for 42 rounds. He's not been put on the back foot hugely. He's never been caught on the ropes or caught into uh, into the corner, and he's not been rocked. And bearing in mind, that like, Frotch is one of the hardest, if not the hardest, hitters in Europe and the world. You know, and Kelvin's managed to tighten up the defence, and he's he's taking them big shots because Carl doesn't play it. Here. When you spar with Carl, he comes to try and knock you out. You know, it's not vicious. It's his job. He's world champion. Massive fight coming up. He's not tinkering around with you. He's not playing with you. He's at, he's hard at you. You know, and on average, we're doing eight or nine rounds of time when we'll be going up there. What can we say about Todd? Todd is just a massive talent. The thing with Todd is, he's light middleweight, he's so fast. His hand speed is incredible. His fitness is through the roof all the time anyway. But the thing with his hand speed, he's got power, and he's got power at every shot. He, he seems to have um, a way of dancing, he seems to move. You watch Todd, and it is, it's just beautiful boxing when you watch Todd. He's got a fantastic relaxed nature about himself. He, he rolls nicely, he slips, punch nicely, but when he slips, he gets shots off. But every single shot he puts in, you feel it. You know, he, he, he can bang. The thing with Andy is, like what they did, I think, uh, at the beginning of uh, the fight against Tom Stalker, his last fight at the end of March on Sky Sports, the, uh, the commentators wrote him off straight away because they just looked at him. At the time, three fights, three losses. It's a bum coming in. Stalker's going to walk through him. Just completely writing him off. By the end of the second round, they've completely changed their opinion on him because Andy comes to fight. 
Now, Andy's had, th had three at the time, and he'd been robbed on two of those occasions. I'm not just saying that as his coach. He won his first, as far as I was concerned. The crowd thought he won his first, and it was the home fighters crowd. And then they said, at best, we'd say that was a draw. Second fight, hands up, lost the second fight. You know, we got outboxed by a very, very good lad. Although we nearly took him out in the last round, which I knew we'd get him at some stage. His third fight, well, that was a complete robbery down at Bethnal Green. You know, the ref completely took it away from us. Andy probably drew the first, could have given the other lad the first. Put the lad on his ass in the second, clear knockdown. In the third round, you might have drawn the third round, I think Andy edged it. Fourth round was all Andy. Andy could not miss the lad with the right hand. Ref gave it to the other lad by one point. And you're like, well, I don't see how that works. Do you know what Did I mean? Do you get to see the scores? No, afterwards? I don't get to see the scores. It was 39 38. Don't they lads. have cards or, or is it just the referee scoring? The referee was scoring it. But, you know, it's a decision. You know, at the end of the day, it was a home fight ring and he got the decision. But oh, fair enough, he got the decision. The lad at the end, though, turned around and said, you won that fight. Yeah. This Saturday in Gloucester, so, is it going to be the referee scoring again? Or? Yeah, it'll be the referee scoring again because it's, it's, it's four threes. Um, so the ref scores that. Um, but Andy Harris, he's a talent. He's hard, hard, physical, fit, specimen of a lightweight. He comes to fight. Every single person that's fought him, they've already all commented on just like, they know they've been in a fight when you've been in with Andy. Andy's in peak condition, as he always is. He's not been able to box for four weeks. It's been five weeks come uh, fight night because he sustained a cut on his left eye. Um, in the Stalker fight. I mean, he gave Tom Stalker hell uh, for, for three of the four rounds. First round, we knew that Stalker was going to come and, and just box, and he did. You know, and Tom Stalker won everything there is possible, bar a gold medal at, uh, or a medal at the Olympics. You know, he's won everything else. Um, sucked that up because we knew it was coming at him. Then we went on the front, front foot, second, third, and fourth round, and we gave Tom a lot to think about. And Do I, you think the South Pole affected it because Tom Stalker's the South Pole, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, no, no. We trained for a South Pole. His opponent Saturday night's a South Pole. Well, okay, so and absolutely no disrespect to the opponent on Saturday night because he, he's, he's a fair opponent, definitely. But he's not no Tom but he's Stalker. No Tom Stalker. Right. So we're ready. We are more than ready for that. And Andy is just gagging to get out there because he's been, been side rail for five weeks, nearly six weeks actually. So he's, he's raring and to he go. And he wants to be active. Uh, Andy speaking. want Andy and Andy will be active. Andy's a crowd pleaser. He wants to fight anyone who's willing to Andy's fight. on the road, but Andy doesn't go on the road with the attitude of, I'm just getting paid. Andy goes on the road in the fact that I'm having a fight tonight. And, and I'm going to try and win. And if I can win it, I'm going to win it, which is absolutely fantastic. And obviously this time fighting in front of the home crowd. Uh, it's going to be a massive confidence boost for him. He's buzzing for it. He can't wait to get in there. So, you know, it's going to be fireworks, you know. Calvin, Todd and Andy, you know. Out of lose three, uh, would you say any of them have got a good chance of getting a knockout from what you've seen? We're coming to win. You're coming to win. We're coming to win. And we will win. Boom!